Let's learn about loot hunting. We will use a problem from ISI entrance 2021. This is subjective problem number 7. So I'll first give you the given data. We have three real numbers A, B, C such that A is less than B is less than C. So all of them are distinct. And they are roots of a cubic. So what kind of cubic is it? We can take the equation as mx cubed plus nx squared plus rx plus s equal to zero. But it's a standard technique to divide this entire thing by m on both sides. If you do that, the leading coefficient becomes one. So let me write that. It is okay to assume that leading coefficient, leading coefficient, that is the coefficient of x cube is one. Okay, because we can just divide by whatever the leading coefficient is and we can get an equation with these same roots. So what I can write here is that these three A, B, C are roots of x cube plus alpha x square plus beta x plus gamma equal to zero. I just divided by m. Okay. And I just renamed n by m as alpha, r by m as beta, and s by m as gamma. All right. It's also given that a plus b plus c is equal to 6. ab plus bc plus ca is equal to 9. So this tells us more information about this equation or this polynomial because then alpha we know is negative a plus b plus c. This is Vieta's formula. If you don't know Vieta's formula, you can look it up in a standard algebra textbook like Holland Knight or something. So the coefficient of x square is negative of the sum of roots and the coefficient of x this one is positive a b plus b c plus c a and gamma on the other hand is negative a b c the product of roots so let me write that first rewrite the equation that we have with this new found information so x cube minus a plus b plus c x square plus a b plus b c plus c a x minus a b c. This is the polynomial. This is the cubic. And this is equal to 0. a b c are roots of this equation. And obviously a plus b plus c is given to be 6. So I can replace this number by 6. a b plus b c plus c a is 9. So I can replace this one by 9 and so on. So let me write that. So the equation is x cube minus 6x square plus 9x minus abc equal to 0. abc are distinct roots because a is less than b is less than c that is given. So abc are distinct real roots of this cubic this cubic okay now what do we want to find out so our goal is the following approximately find the position of the roots so in fact show that a is between 0 and 1 b is between 1 and 3 and c is between 3 and 4 so basically find the approximate values of the roots of this cubic. So the step one 
and this is a hint of course you can pause the video and try it yourself use calculus in fact find out the maxima and minima of this cubic okay so the polynomial px is x cube minus 6x square plus 9x minus abc how do we compute the maxima and minima so here is a side note of how to do that step 1 is compute the first derivative and equate it to 0 and second is whatever the values you get the critical values from here Calculate the sign of the second derivative at those critical values. This is a standard method of finding maxima minima. I'll give you an example using this problem. So p prime x is equal to 3x square minus 12x plus 9. So set this first derivative equal to 0 to find out the critical values. So, 3x square minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0 or x square minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0 which means that x minus 1 times x minus 3 is equal to 0 which means that x is either equal to 1 or x is equal to 3. So, x is 1 or x is 3. These are the two critical values. Let me write that. Critical values, critical values are x equals to 1 and x equals to 3. Now, check the second derivative at the critical values. Second derivative greater than 0 implies minima. Second derivative less than 0 implies maxima. This is a, obviously it follows from standard calculus uh, books. You can check Marin, for example. It's a very good book. How to compute maxima, minima, and what is the logic that goes into it. Okay, let's try that. So, what is the second derivative in this case? So, first derivative was p prime x is 3x square minus 12x plus 9. So, p double prime x is 6x minus 12. So, notice that p double prime of 1 is 6 times 1 minus 12, which is negative 6 less than 0. This means this is a maxima. At x equals to 1, we have a maxima. And p double prime 3 is equal to 6 times 3 minus 12 equal to 6, which is greater than 0 which means we have a minima, I should say local minima and local maxima. So, this is x equals to 3. Great. So, we have these two values and we understand the minim maxima and minima. Let's try to draw the picture a little bit. So, at x equals to 1, we have the maxima. x equals to 3, we have the minima. Let's draw the picture. Is it possible that the maxima is like below the x-axis? Something like this maybe. Is that possible? Well, it's not possible because if that happens, then the graph would be somewhat like this. And then we have only one real root. Of course, you have to write more. You have to say why x positive means it goes to infinity, positive infinity. x minus means it goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. But that is almost evident from the equation that we are working with. You can think about it. Why, if I send x to positive infinity, px will go 
to positive infinity. And you can make a comment in the description why this should happen. And similarly, if x goes to negative infinity, why is it true that px goes to negative infinity? Telling us that this particular graph, well, at least in principle, this looks okay in the uh, infinite right hand side or the right left hand side of the x axis. Okay, but this cannot happen because then we have only one real root. Similarly, we cannot have something like this because then again you have two distinct roots. One is a repeated root here, but as I mentioned previously, it's given that a is less than b is less than c. That's given. So all of them are distinct, so we cannot have repeated roots. So the only thing that can happen is like this. Okay, so let me draw that what can happen actually. So x equals to 1 x equals to 3, this is what could happen. Again, we cannot, we cannot have something like this. Why? The global minima, local minima cannot happen above x-axis because again, that means that we have exactly one real root. The same logic holds. So, we can in fact, say that the picture looks like this. Okay, great. So that means that we have one root between 1 and 3, which is my root B. One root is, so this is the root A, this is the root C, because A is less than B is less than C, that's given. We, or we have found that B is between 1 and 3. C is definitely greater than 3 and 1 A is definitely less than 1. We have no reason to believe that A hits the x axis between 0 and 1. So, this picture might not work. We have to still prove that and we want to show that C is between 3 and 4. So, we have to check that. So, those are the two things that we have to do now. We are almost done. So now the question is, how can we say that A is greater than 0? So we just have to show that A is positive. If we can show this, then we are done because A is already less than 1. So if A is positive, it must be between 0 and 1. Okay, let's try to do that. Let's go back to the polynomial one more time. So, p of x is equal to x cube minus 6x square plus 9x minus abc and abc are roots of this one. Okay. So, that means if I plug in x equals to b, I will get 0 plug in x equals to b to get 0. Okay, let's see how, the, how that works. So, b cube minus 6b square plus 9b minus abc, this is equal to 0. What I just did it, I just plugged in x equals to b. So, I can take a b common and cancel it off because I know that b is between 1 and 3. So, b is not 0. So, I can take a b common and cancel it off. So, b square minus 6b plus 9 minus ac is equal to 0. This part is simply b minus 3 whole square that is equal to ac. Now, notice that b is less than 3. So, b is not equal to 3. So, b minus 3 is not 0. b is not equal to 3. So, b minus 3 is not equal to 0. So, b minus 3 whole square is greater than 0. A square quantity is always greater than 0. So, 
that means ac is also greater than 0 c we already know is greater than 3 so c is positive that means a must be positive it's quite beautiful isn't it a must be positive because ac is greater than 0 we just found it why is that because b minus 3 whole square is greater than 0 because it's a perfect square and b is not equal to 3 great so we found that a is a positive number which is what we needed to show that a is between 0 and 1 the, the last thing we need to show is c is less than 4 let's mark 4 here if we can show that 4 that 4 at 4 this is positive at 3 of course it was negative because it's a minima and we showed that it must be below x axis because otherwise we would have only one root so we if we can show that at x equals to 4 this is positive then we are done okay so we want to show we will show that at x equals to 4 px is greater than 0 then by rolls theorem this is rolls theorem and we discussed this in our calculus module uh, and visually it is very clear that between these two points the root must exist and that root is my number c okay so how do we show that p of 4 is greater than 0 okay let's first compute let's look at px one more time this is x cube minus 6x square plus 9x minus abc okay let's look at p of 1 this is 1 minus 6 plus 9 minus abc this is 4 minus abc and if you check this out let's check this picture out this thing is positive p of 1 is greater than 0 so clearly this is greater than 0 p of 1 is 4 minus abc and that's greater than 0 okay let's try p of 4 now something magical will happen 4 cube minus 6 times 4 square plus 9 times 4 minus abc this thing is simply 4 so this is 4 minus abc again this is quite an accident we can say but this happens that p of 4 if you compute it it again gives you p of 4 minus abc which is same as p of 1 which we know is greater than 0 so p of 4 is greater than 0 one more time p of 4 if you compute is 4 minus abc you can just crunch these numbers the 64 plus 36 minus 96 that's 4 so that's 4 minus abc that is greater than 0 why because p of 1 was 4 minus abc and we know that p of 1 is greater than 0 and that tells us that at x equals to 4 it's positive and we are done then between 3 and 4 we have a root at x equals to 3 px was negative at x equals to 4 px is positive so by rolls theorem by continuity of this function there is a root between them so c is less than 4 so we have all the pieces together we learned a lot we used rolls theorem we used maxima minima we use squares and signs and uh, we solve this beautiful problem from ISI entrance. Check the link in the description for uh, a free toolbox that we give out to students with resources, problems and so on. And keep on doing great mathematics. I'll see you in the next one.